Well, hello, fellow sojourners on the Worship Matters book study. It's been a hot minute. Three months to the date since my last installment. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being so patient with me. Um, got some through, got through some new responsibilities at the church and everything seemingly is going pretty good this month. So it's time to resume today's, um, or this week's installment is from a chapter 11, skillfully combining God's word in which Bob is the chapters incorporating God's word as a crucial foundation of the music that we use for worship. And I really like in this chapter how he distinguishes or differentiates um, or the need for not differentiating worship and word. Sometimes we've heard that. I know I have. Join us for worship and word. Well, for selecting the right songs or presenting them in a uh, worshipful manner, that is word centered there's not a separation it's just we're singing we're singing the word of god that's um, at that radio station i really love songs that intertwine scriptural readings as uh as a song there's an ancient history of this um the psalter uh, a lot of him uh, the psalms are intended to be sung so um so diving right in, that's what it's about. And um, but Bob stated the importance of treasuring God's word, um, that that, again, is our foundation for worship. We sing God's word. Um, really um, important when we're, when we're doing contemporary songs, but also... also the traditional. Um, there's a lot of music out there that specifically is word centered. And at our church, uh, the Village Church, it's the, if we pick anything out of the green books, we have a collection of green books. Anything out of those green books has gone through an extensive process to make sure that it's, God, it's God's word is centered on the song. Very important. Uh, so, um, we're, you know, us, us being a standalone church, that's what we do um, internally, is we want to make sure that whatever, whatever songs we select, whatever hymns we select, that they are aligned with God's word. Um, let's see. I, I like that, you know, he, he talks about not being emotion based, you know, because music is, I love this definition of music and I don't, I think it's an unknown author. Music is an emotion in search of a word. I like that. But if it's emotion based, does that emotion align with the scripture we're trying to read or we're trying to represent or are we even representing scripture in that song that's that's the basis of this uh, of this chapter uh, the words we sing should be clear not obscure or subject to a personal interpretation that's important too there's a lot of a lot of songs out there that are subjective and then bob gets into how you could read god's word which we do at the church uh, we have the and then we have a responsive reading, show God's word, um, which we do that as well. We put it on the uh, PowerPoint as well. Sometimes even a scripture that might be based on the song interjected in an instrumental part of the song. That's what Bob suggests on page 95. That's good. And also, of course, praying God's word. Um, and, if, and he ends with, he concludes with a faithful worship leader combines the word of God with music to magnify the greatness of God in Jesus Christ. So, um, and, I, and Bob also writes in there this week that sometimes it's 
the, the word and worship has been separated so much that some people attend worship uh, in two different locations where they will get the emotional connection from the music at one church, but then get the theological and, and the word-based um, from another church, uh, which I've actually done. So that put, this po poses our question here is... <clears throat> What is, what do you, if you were to say, what's your, what's your um, Im most important aspect of the entire worship process? Um, if you were to say, like, it's got to be fully worship with the full worship for me, for instance, full worship for me is music and the word equal components and i've i've gone to places where i've i haven't had both components and i i haven't lasted long there like i remember specifically i went to uh, in ocala the salvation army church which i loved i loved the 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 message boy the messages were great but the music there wasn't much of a connection for me um, I feel like we're, you know, we're, we have the best of both worlds at our church because we, I was raised on hymns, and I also appreciate uh, contemporary music as well, and everything in between. Sometimes there we do in between stuff. So, um, so I feel fully complete where we're at now. I, I do like the blended service that we used to do. Um, if I... You know, if, that would be ideal for me as well, but um, it's not all about me. So we got people with different preferences. So in the comments, why don't you share with uh, with everybody what your ideal, you know, what what speaks to you? And there's no right or wrong answer because we have some people in the congregation that the music speaks to them. First and foremost, over anything else, it's the music. Then we have some people where their word or message driven and that really speaks to them um you know you would think with me being a musician it would be just music but you know i'm also uh, a pastor who you know enjoys i, I i'm called a bible geek a lot <laughs> so i i really enjoy the richness uh, of sound theologically accurate doctrine and an application so for me it really is 50 50 i really like the 50 now growing up maybe it wasn't so much you know maybe it was more music driven for me um you know so how about you where are you within this spectrum of worship and word or music and word and it's all worship so i think that's probably a better way to say it so we have music music inspired by the spirit and the word inspired and then it's all under the umbrella of worship so i'm interested to read your your comments and we're back we're back and hopefully i'll get this uh, back to weekly as well so have a blessed week and i'm looking forward to reading the comments